So now I would want to talk briefly about um, identifying, um, estimating the purity and purity. So as we said at the beginning, samples could have a mixture of normal cells and tumor cells, but um, we, we don't know what's the fraction in, in advance. So we developed a method together with Scott Carter in the lab, now he's a PI at the Dana Farber, um, that um, looks at both copy number and mutation data and looks at the allele fraction of different um, uh, copy number um, uh, events or the and, or allele copy ratio and the allele fraction of different mutations and tries to fit um, a kind of a histogram that is affected both by the purity and ploidy. And, and, and uh, basically you could fit these different levels of allele copy ratio. So this is kind of zero um, allele copy ratios, one, two, and three to the data. There's another fit that is like this, but it's less likely because you see all these odd levels, most of them don't have any, in, have any uh, uh, copy event in them. Or you could fit this one, which is also not like likely because you are not explaining these copy ratios. So this is the most likely fit with, with these mutations or these copy number changes being subclonal uh, uh, copy numbers. So they're in between integer copy values. So um, we use this method to estimate the purity and ploidy uh, of, of different samples. Then we could use this, once we estimate the purity and ploidy, we could then estimate the, the CCF, the, the cancer cell fraction of every mutation. Most mutations are clonal, and this is what we, we call one, but other mutations are subclonal. And, we, and since we have a discrete number of reads supporting the mutations or, or the copy number changes, we don't know exactly what is the, the CCF. We have a distribution. But for every mutation, it's a distribution. But now we leverage the fact that cluster has clones in it and all the mutations that are shared across the clone should have the same CCF. So we apply this Bayesian clustering algorithm using a Dirichlet process because we don't know how many clusters to expect. And, and using this Dirichlet process, we find the number of clusters. And what we see, this is the before clustering and this is after clustering. And you can see it's much sharper. These mutations all share the same uh, uh, allele fraction and these mutations here and these mutations here. Um, using this uh, allele fraction, we could start to build phylogenetic trees of these cancers, even from a single sample. Because you could see that these mutations that are in 70% of the cells and these mutations roughly in 45% of the cells, the clone that has these mutations must include also a subclone that has these mutations because 45% of the cells plus 70% of the cells is more than 100% of the cell. So there must be a subclone that has these 45% mutations that is a subclone of the 70%. So even from a single sample, we could start to do that. Uh, build this phylogenetic use using this what's called this pigeonhole principle. Then we, we extended this to two-dimensional space and, uh, and uh, these again are the uncertainties of single mutations of events but we could apply this uh, clustering in two dimensions and, and indeed we could see that some subclones that existed in time point one only in roughly 10% of the cells in a, time, a later time point increased to 75% of the cell. So these clones, we could start using these two time points, we could start to learn dynamics of the cancer, clones that are growing and clo clones that are decreasing. So together with Kathy Wu and Dana Vilanda and Scott Cart and Peter Stoyanov, we looked at this in CLL and we saw that some cases showed no evolution between time point one and time point two, which could be years apart. And some had clear evolution and, and, the, and it was very clear that the ones that had no evolution typically were untreated between time point one and time point two. And then ones that were treated between time point one and time point two, clearly we saw evolution and even the mutations in those clusters, we could identify what is the driver that, uh, that increases, causes the increase of the fitness of these cells and therefore the clone increased over time. Now we extended this to uh, alg algorithm to uh, analyze multiple samples because the, the way it was written before, it couldn't really extend. So now we have a, a, a much more efficient way to analyze multiple samples from the same patient and really understand the timing and evolution with this package of, uh, that we call phylogic NDT for n-dimensional uh, phylogic and timing. And uh, you could read about it. It's available in, in GitHub. You could read it in this bio archive and it was used in, in two recent uh, publications. 
one in CLL and one in part of this pan cancer analysis of whole genome to study the evolution of, of cancer. And this, and this uh, package will, is developed um, uh, spearheaded by, by Ignati Leshner in the group. So I will stop here if there are any questions.